holiday season is in full swing and I've been decorating, wrapping, and also preparing some homemade gifts that I want to give to some family this year. I've never really done that before but it felt more meaningful than just buying something random on my Amazon like I usually do. It's getting much colder as the nights drop down to the 30s and will continue to drop drastically as winter approaches. But it's still so beautiful. The nights are just cold and crisp and while I am so excited for spring to come back around, I am really making an effort this year to embrace the discomfort of the winter season and to just appreciate how it invites us all to finally slow down after such a busy summer. My body is definitely craving deep rest. I have been so tired. I feel drained from work and can't seem to get my energy back, which is a little frustrating. And to be honest, I think I'm feeling a career change on the horizon which is crazy to think about after almost 17 years of being a massage therapist. Don't get me wrong, it's cold, but it's just feels so nice. <laughs> I am currently making the 
sourdough bread that I'm making for some people for Christmas. I realize I haven't gotten a start on any of that stuff, only like for the kids and Vince, but in terms of like family, I haven't started on anything. So, so far today I've made four loaves of sourdough bread. One is for me and then three are four people I'm gifting it to. And then I still have like, I don't know, I think like four, five more to make. I totally forgot about my grandmother. I have to put her on the list. Yeah, I still have quite a few. It's actually gonna be a little bit difficult making bread for so many people because I only have one oven, obviously, and I have two Dutch ovens and two Benetton, I think that's what they're called, right? Um, Benetton bowls. So yeah, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> it's gonna take a while. So I'm making these today and then I think I'll do uh, like two, like four more tomorrow than whatever's left the next day and then I'm done. And then I have to ship out two, no, four packages, four of the bread. <sighs> God knows how much that's gonna cost. I don't even know how much it is to ship these things anymore. So I did my little small test batch for wine. I already drank that, it came out great, but I only made like, I don't even know how much I made. So I decided to make, yeah, just a bigger batch. So this is like a gallon, a gallon, yeah. So I'm gonna have some strawberry wine in like, I'm not sure. Three weeks, two two weeks. My first batch didn't take very long actually, but it, it it was like a really it was my first time. It was a really small batch, and I really didn't care to let it age very long because you can let those things age for months, <laughs> for a year, and I just I really don't need to do that. I just want to make some wine, enjoy it. I'm not trying to do anything fancy. I'm just having clean wine, like literally three ingredients. That's amazing to me. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna start doing. Depending how this batch comes out, I'm gonna start, I think I'm just gonna start making my own wine and just drinking that. So honestly, store-bought wine is just, whatever's in there, it usually upsets my stomach. Even if after like a glass, it kind of goes away, it's still kind of concerning that it makes my stomach hurt at all in the first place. So if I can just make something myself that my body responds a little bit better to, why not? I already gave these a little shake today. I have to shake them or mix them every day just to keep the yeast eating the sugar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It smells so good. It's already starting to smell alcoholic, fizzy. I don't know how to explain it. The bubbles are already going. Let me turn that on more. So I can definitely see the bubbles at the top, which tells me it is fermenting. So basically once the bubbles calm down, which this will probably take, I have no idea. The first one took about a week or so for the bubbles to start settling down before I, I transferred it to a different bottle to ferment a little bit longer. So basically with the strawberries, sugar, and water, this will ferment for whatever amount of time, but basically I'll be able to tell by the bubbles. So the bubbles are starting to become active right now, then they will become really active and then once they start to die down that means that the yeast has eaten most of the sugar then i will transfer it to a glass bottle and then let it ferment even more and then the bubbles will continue to diminish and diminish and then for the most part i mean you can drink it that way even if there's still some carbonation or still some uh, you know, bubbles, you can still drink it that way. But it um, just depends how how you want it. But for me, I like the fizz. So if it still has fizz in it, I'll still drink it. But basically I'm just waiting for the bubbles to settle down to tell me that, okay, it's the yeast has eaten all the sugar and then I can drink it. I love you, baby. Do you have the potty? No.
it's a rainy day, but it's such a beautiful day right now. I love hearing the rain, but I don't want to make the house cold by opening the window. <laughs> so I'll just look at it for now. Actually, I have the window in the kitchen open because it gets really hot in there when I'm using the oven. So I can hear the rain in there. I've been trying really hard these days to really work on being more present. And I know that's a buzzword these days. And I think the meaning kind of gets lost in the trendiness of it all. Really, it's just in, it's just these little practices, right? Of just when you're doing the dishes, for example, sweeping or mopping or whatever, ta doing laundry, whatever task that you're doing, playing with your kids or talking to your partner or whatever it is to just pretend like nothing outside of that moment exists. You're just fully immersed in what you're doing. When you're washing the dishes, if you're washing them by hand, you're paying attention to the sensation of the water, the temperature, the sound of the running water. Just, okay, I'm picking this plate up and I'm putting it in the dish rack or whatever it is that you're doing. It's just about not doing the dishes and thinking about the next task you have to do or what you have to do tomorrow or worrying about money or worrying about another problem that you might be having. It's really just about blocking all of that out for just a short amount of time because trust me, those things will be back but blocking it out for a short amount of time, giving your brain a rest, because I don't think we realize how active our minds are. Even when we're not trying to think about things, worry about things, you, you always have those programs running in the background. They're always going and it's exhausting, you know, and it really can be a, a source of underlying stress or anxiety or whatever. So I've really been trying to just when I'm in my kitchen, baking bread, making breakfast, having a coffee, I'm just doing that. All life's challenges, everything else, <laughs> they're not going anywhere, they will return. You don't need to constantly be aware of them, thinking that by constantly thinking about them that you're gonna that you're in control of them or that you're gonna be able to change them. That, that can be very, I think very unhealthy and we do it so habitually um as people which is totally understandable like no judgment <laughs> i do it too we all do it but there is a, something there is a peace that can come even just for a short moment with just being where you are and not thinking about anything else and you have to be intentional about that because that does not come naturally to us as humans we're always looking to the next thing or we're looking in the past. We're looking in the past or we're thinking about what's coming next. As soon as one desire has been fulfilled, it births another desire, a new desire. As soon as one accomplishment has been accomplished, one task has been done, then on to the next thing. So you're always going to be reaching, <laughs> reaching for something else. You, you know, you're, you're gonna climb that mountain and then as soon as you climb that mountain, you're thinking about the next mountain you wanna climb and we just go, 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 go. And that's great, having goals, having things you wanna do, but sometimes there is immense value and so much peace to be cultivated with just saying, okay, like <laughs> those things are there, those things will come in this moment, even if it's just for like 15 minutes, an hour, whatever, just, None of that is there, none of that exists, just be here. Be there with your coffee, be there with your, you know, whatever you're doing on your computer or whatever it is that you're doing, just, just be there. Maybe try not to think about what's the next thing you have to do, what's the next thing you have to accomplish. Oh, we have a visitor. You know, life is long and we have to have goals and things we wanna do and why not? We have, you know, whatever time we have, do stuff. <laughs> I think just getting so obsessed with the doing and only thinking about the doing is a lot more harmful to your being than I think we realize a lot of the time. So just take a deep breath and just try to be in the moment, just for a little bit. Life, life is gonna go fast. Life goes fast sometimes. So try to, try to stop to enjoy it once in a while. All right, I will see you guys in my next video. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Okay, bye.